There was a maid in Scotland born. Follow my love, come over the strand. Who was carried away as a bride from her home to be the fair flower of Northumberland? Beautiful maid, you must marry me. Follow my love, come over the strand. I've a castle and lands in high degree. You'll be the fair flower of Northumberland. Father, dear father, he's summoning me. Follow my love, come over the strand. To leave this my home and go south by the sea. To be the fair flower of Northumberland. Daughter, dear daughter, we wealthy will be if you follow the young lord over the strand. King Henry of England has signalled to me you to be the fair flower of Northumberland. Mother, dear mother, why should it be for my love come over the strand? I must leave you for this far country to be the fair flower of Northumberland. Daughter, dear daughter, your grandsire did say, far, far away, far over the strand. King William of England did drive him away, and we lost our home in Northumberland. Father, the Frenchman, he may not love me, Follow my love, come over the strand. His language is foreign and lonely I'll be when I'm the fair flower of Northumberland. Daughter, dear daughter, your mate must marry. Follow my love, come over the strand. Our families together much stronger will be when you're the fair flower of Northumberland. Mother, dear mother, I know not my fate. Follow my love, come over the strand. This Lord, will I love him, or will it be hate? And I'll be all alone in Northumberland. Daughter, dear daughter, such grief I will see when you follow your young Lord over the strand. I'll mourn and I'll weep for you constantly. When you're the fair flower of Northumberland. The maiden went off to her ship by the sea. Follow my love, come over the strand. To a green hill in Morpeth, where married she'd be. To be the fair flower of Northumberland. In this tower by the river, so brave and so bold. Follow my love. Come over the strand. The young lord was waiting his new bride to hold, and she the fair flower of Northumberland. This young lord was handsome, enraptured was she. For my love, come over the strand, and soon they had bennies, one, two, and three, and she was the fair flower of Northumberland.
and helping you all to know about the earliest history of Morpeth. These characters actually did come. Juliana, who was the daughter of the exiled Gospatricks in Dunbar, came to Morpeth and she was going to, to marry in an arranged marriage with Ranulf de Merley, who was son of the first Baron of Morpeth. And there are just a few facts in the history books about these people. Very, very few. We know that um, Juliana came from Scotland. <coughs> she brought a dowry to her husband. And we know that part of that dowry went to Newminster Abbey when the Abbey was founded in 1138. And we also know that she and her husband and one of their sons, Osbert, was married in Newminster Abbey. That's about all the documentary evidence that there is. So when I decided I'd like to create this story, to find out about it, I had to think where I was going to find the information from, how I could do it. We know so little about them. But what I decided that we could do was, if we knew what was in the head of this girl and in the knowledge of this man, what they actually knew the stories, the family stories that were told around the fireside in the evenings, what the story of her grandfather, this valiant warrior, Gospatrick, the story of her father, Ranoff's stories about his father who came over with or shortly after the conquest and how they arrived in Morbid. I thought, if I could learn and pass it on to everybody here, what was in their heads, what they knew, then in that way we would get to know our characters a little bit. What I do need to say is that it's not a romance and it's not a tragedy. It's not a Romeo and Juliet story. It's actually, as far as I've been able to, it's all documented, it's all real. It's a history. It's not a fun romance. It would make a wonderful romantic novel, but that's not what this is. Um, as, as regards Juliana, I think I already said that, so I won't say that anymore. So, as well as the evidence for Juliana's existence that is mainly in the Newminster Cartulary. We also have, especially for her grandfather, we have um, evidence from the monks who wrote the, the histories of the early Norman conquest um, at, shortly after it actually happened. So there was Simeon of Durham who wrote quite a lot about the early Gospatricks, what, what he did. And by the way, she was the daughter of the Gospatrics. I think I forgot to say that. And the other monk chronicler was Odoric Vitalis, who was a English um, monk who was sent as a child to Normandy, and he wrote also <coughs> about the Norman conquest. And he, pulling out these little threads of evidence from those monk chroniclers who wrote in the first half of the 12th century mainly, um, we were able to find information about the terrible Gus Patrick and everything he did, um, and that was how... I know, I was able to find out, and I put in here, what they actually did. Now, the, most of the information from Audrey Vitalis and Simon is about Gus Patrick, and that was Juliana's grandfather. But the story of Ranulph's father, William de Merley, is even less well-known. These characters aren't like sort of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn. They're not big, important national figures. So we have to sort of extricate where we can, what we can find out. Um, but Ranulph's father, William de Merley, also came over probably at the time of the conquest or very shortly afterwards. And because he was never a very big player in this, he's our, he's our hero, he's our man, but he was never a big player in the national scene, his story we're able to work out by the way that he followed more important men. He was the servant of Bishop Geoffrey of Coutances, who was a bishop, who was one of William the Conqueror's most frightening, terrifying warriors, as well as being a bishop. So William de Merle, we know, was his servant. So as the bishop, Geoffrey, went round conquering and killing and doing all the things that he had to do, in the south of England mainly, William de Merle followed him along. And there are two very small pieces of evidence which prove that, which I've gone to in some detail in this book. And as well as that, there's another contemporary of these people. So Jeff, Bishop Geoffrey, William de Merley, and Robert de Mowbray. And most of us know, or we think we know, and I certainly didn't until I did all this, that uh, Robert de Mowbray was the Earl of Northumberland. We've got de Mowbray's streets in Morgan and such like. But who he actually was. 
And it was through the link between Earl Robert de Mowbray, Bishop Geoffrey of Coutances, and William de Murley Ronald's father that actually ended up with William de Murley coming to Morpeth and establishing the Mott at Tar Hill, which we have. And in the course of doing this, I've also been able to find out, and I think, as far as I know, this is correct, the first documented reference and name of Morpeth was in 1095, and it was at the time when Earl Robert de Mowbray was rebelling against the king, and William de Murley, his helper, was one of his main supporters in that rebellion. So that's really all I want to say. Um, but in the course of doing all this, I like to have adventures, I like to get bike and go places. Uh, my sister and I went off to Normandy. And although many of the well-known Norman families in Northumberland, we actually do know their place of origin, it's never been known where the Merlet family originated. So how does Bridget find out? She gets a road atlas and in France, a French road atlas, and looked at any place names that might be anything like the word Merlet. And the only one in Normandy was a little place called Le Merleau. So we went there, my sister and me. We knocked on the door of the mayory and we got to know the mayor and we made friends. And since then, there have been various communications going on between us. And now, I would like to present my friend Carol, who's going to read a letter from the mayor of Le Merleau, specially written for us tonight. Chers amis de Morpeth, Bridget est arrivée au Merleau à vélo avec sa sœur, un beau jour d'été 2014, pour les recherches historiques et établir un lien entre notre commune et Morpeth. De deux. 2014, on remontait le temps jusqu'à l'époque de Guillaume le Conquérant. Notre blason était le moteur de recherche pour Brigitte, la couleur, le maire, les insignes. Dès ce premier jour de rencontre, Bridget et moi avons sympathisé. Ensuite, de retour en Angleterre, les recherches de Bridget se sont précisées et ont été confirmées. Il y avait bien un lien entre nos deux villages, avec le baron de Merlet et le maire Leroux. La correspondance continue entre nous, également avec les écoles et ma collègue Pascal Bolin, une enseignante et aussi conseillère municipale. Bridget est la bienvenue aussi chez nous. Nous lui souhaitons du succès pour son livre. Nous souhaitons le parcourir. Nous vous saluons et à très bientôt. Martine Gresson, maire du maire Leroux. Dear friends in Morpeth, one lovely summer's day in 2014, Bridget with her sister arrived by bicycle in the Mary Hall to do historical research and to establish a link between our district and Morpeth. From 2014, we were able to go back as far as the time of William the Conqueror. Our coat of arms was the driving force for Bridget's research, the colour, the blackbird, the emblems. From that first meeting, Bridget and I became friends. Then on returning to England, Bridget's research took shape and was confirmed. There really was a link between our two villages with the Baron of Merveille and Le Merleau. Correspondence continues between us, as well as with the schools, and my colleague, Pascal Boulin, who is a teacher and also a town councillor here. Bridget is very welcome to visit us. We wish her success with her book, and we hope it does well. We say hello to you all and hope to see you very soon. Martin Gresson, Mayor of the Mayor Hall.